Hi everyone, welcome to the Mechanics and Materials One channel. This is Burak Görmüş and I will be talking about how can we implement the finite element method in order to solve beam bending problems, so that we can obtain an elastic curve and deflection values throughout the length of a beam. Let's start with the definition of a beam. Beams are long and rigid structures and they may have different boundary conditions uh, throughout their lengths. For example, in this slide, you are seeing a fixed beam. Beams are generally subjected to transverse loadings. This loading can be a point load, or it can be distributed over their length. In addition to the transverse loadings, they can be subjected to the moments. While solving beam problems, it's assumed that they do not extend through their length. It means that the actual deformation is not considered. Besides, twisting can be neglected. Uh, as a result, deflection is only in the transverse direction. After giving a brief introduction, let's talk about how can we mathematically express the deflection for a beam. In order to express the deflection, we can use Euler Bernoulli beam theory, as you can see on the slide. This is a fourth order differential equation and it's our strong form while implementing finite element method. In order to solve problems using finite element method, we generally follow a simple route. The first step of this route is to convert the strong form into a weak form by expressing the differential equation using integrals. After this step, we approximate the solution. For beam problems, we use Hermite type shape functions and we assume that we can express the deflection as a cubic polynomial. After some derivations after these steps, we can obtain the element stiffness value for a beam element. In the MATLAB code, it's assumed that our beam elements can be expressed as 1D because they have only important one domain, and the important domain is their length. The orientation and location of beams can be expressed with four axes, two axes per node. In detail, we can express the deflection and slope values for each node. For example, here, delta 1 is the deflection in the y direction and delta 2 is the slope of this node 1. In short, in order to express the stiffness of a beam element, we need a 4 by 4 matrix because we have four, 4 unknowns in total for an element. And you can see this stiffness matrix here. And as you can observe, it is dependent of Young's modulus, moment of inertia, and length. In order to solve problems with finite element method, we need to assemble our geometry. We need to go from local to global as a last step. What do I mean by that? Let's look at an example. In this example, there is a fixed end and a roller and a transverse loading at the end. And we can express this beam as two finite beam elements. One beam for length 1, one beam for length 2. Each beam element has its own unknowns in their local coordinates. For example, for L1 element, we know delta 1 and delta 2 are equal to 0 because it's a fixed end. Besides, delta 3 is 0 because there is a roller and the deflection is equal to 0. The only unknown for L1 element uh, is delta 4 and it is the slope of this node 2. For L2 we know delta 1 is 0 due to the roller and delta 2 is unknown. But you can see that the slope at node 2 for L1 element is the same as the slope at node 1 for L2 element. As a result we need to combine them. In short we need to go from local to global and express the coordinates in a different way, so that we can assemble our structure. After the assembled procedure, we can obtain a coordinate system per each node like this, and we can express the unknowns for node 2, combining the element 1 and element 2. In this geometry, we have three nodes, and we have two coordinates per each node. Hence, our global stiffness matrix should be 6 by 6. As you can see here and mentioned before, 
the unknowns of the node 2 at the middle has been combined such as we can express the stiffness matrix globally by using the local stiffness values for element 1 and element 2. In order to assemble the global stiffness matrix, we basically put the local stiffness values into the global stiffness matrix. The orange stiffness values at the left top is for the stiffness of element 1. And at the bottom, you can see that the local values of element 1 placed into the global stiffness matrix. We follow a similar procedure for element 2. The local stiffness matrix is given at the right top. As you can see, it's also placed into the global matrix at the right bottom. As you can see here and observe, the values in the rectangles on the slides have been located in the same place for global stiffness matrix. Hence, we need to sum them up because they occupy the same place. If we sum these values up, we get our global stiffness matrix here given at the middle in the color yellow. As said before, we can have different boundary conditions per each node. For rollers and pins, the displacement is zero, while for a fixed end, both the displacement and slope values are zero. Therefore, in this example, the unknowns are related to the number four, five, and six axes. The slope at node two, the slope and displacement values at node three. In conclusion, for node one, we know the slope and the displacement. For node two, we know the displacement, but not the slope. For node 3, we do not know neither the displacement nor the slope. In total, we have 3 knowns and 3 unknowns. Using finite element method, we can find the unknowns and we can find the reactions at the nodes where we already know the displacement related boundary conditions. The MATLAB GUI that is created follows a similar procedure in order to solve beam bending problems. And I will represent this GUI in the next video. So, see you in the next video.